Tonight, the dangerous new threat in Louisiana, forcing more evacuations, extreme heat, roasting New Orleans, hundreds of thousands still without power after Hurricane Ida. Residents bust to shelters to stay cool as the long lines for gas turn deadly. One man shot while waiting to fill up. Horrifying new video of nursing home residents forced to ride out the storm in a warehouse. Patients packed in on mattresses on the floor, some calling out for help. At least seven have died. The punishment the nursing homes are now facing. In the Northeast, the death toll from Ida's aftermath is rising. And the moment these NYPD officers dove into floodwaters in an attempt to rescue residents trapped below. COVID and schools across the country, more than 1,000 districts have closed for in person learning this fall. And chilling new video of one father confronting a school principal over COVID rules, threatening to zip tie her hands and perform a citizen's arrest. I felt threatened. I felt scared. Defiance in Afghanistan, the brave women marching for their rights and the violent crackdown by the Taliban. And we remember a beloved member of our family who may have felt like a member of yours. The tributes pouring in for Willard Scott. This is NBC Nightly News with Kate Snow. Good evening. Hurricane Ida hit Louisiana one week ago, but its impact is still changing lives. This weekend, hundreds of residents had to evacuate their homes again, this time due to the dangerous heat and lack of power. The situation there is dire. The power expected to be out for weeks. Hospitals are overwhelmed, and we're hearing more horror stories from when the storm hit. One nursing homeowner is under fire after these images surfaced showing patients packed into unsanitary conditions. And in the Northeast, the death toll from the same storm now tops. Tonight, growing pushback against the president's vaccine mandates, the governors and businesses who say they won't follow them. One hospital says it can no longer deliver babies because too many nurses quit over the mandate. The Biden administration hitting back. We've got to use every lever we have in order to fight this pandemic. Are we turning a corner? The number of COVID cases now dropping, including in some of the hardest hit states. What's behind the trend? The FBI documents just declassified what they say about the Saudi government's involvement in the 9-11 attacks. And our Richard Engel back in Kabul, witnessing changes from the Taliban. New threat, we're tracking another tropical storm on track to hit the south. An explosion destroying an apartment building in an Atlanta suburb Investigators are on the scene. 48 hours until the California recall election, President Biden now hitting the campaign trail. This is NBC Nightly News with Kate Snow. Good evening. Let's start off this Sunday with some good news for a change. New figures from the CDC show COVID infections in the U.S. have dropped a bit, offering some new hope as we head into the fall. But that said, the U.S. Surgeon General today said Americans still need to work collectively to get to a place where cases stay low. It's why the president announced a number of vaccine mandates for companies and federal workers last week. But already this weekend, we're seeing what happens when some employees choose to leave their jobs rather than and get the COVID vaccine, and there's growing political opposition to those mandates. We begin tonight with Morgan Chesky. Tonight, growing backlash over President Biden's vaccine mandate. At least 19 Republican governors denouncing the rule, requiring businesses with at least 100 employees to make COVID shots mandatory or offer weekly testing. The president's actions in a mandate hardens the resistance. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis. Tonight, emergency at the border and the massive operation that started today. The U.S. has begun flying migrants back to Haiti after nearly 15,000 were being held under a bridge in Texas. The border crossing now closed down. Our reporter with exclusive access to the camp. Booster confusion, the nation's top doctors defending the FDA panel's recommendation to limit who should get a COVID vaccine booster. Science sort of playing out in a very transparent way. Why they think the list of those eligible may soon expand. School shutdowns, more than 2,000 schools have closed already this year due to COVID outbreaks. The new protocols some districts are using to stay open. Breaking news just moments ago, a body has just been found, believed to be that of Gabby Petito. Now her fiancé, a person of interest after their cross-country trip together, has gone missing. A military plane crashes into a Texas neighborhood, homes damaged, the pilots rush to the hospital. 
and just black smoke everywhere. Shrinking seafood. Why are the fish in the sea getting smaller? And what it means for the price you pay at the grocery store? And what these two young boys did that meant so much to one veteran's family. This is NBC Nightly News with Kate Snow. Good evening. The images from the small border town of Del Rio, Texas, have been disturbing. Nearly 15,000 migrants, mainly Haitian, forced to live in miserable living conditions in a border patrol camp under a bridge. Today, the United States government began a massive operation to remove them, flying many to Haiti and busing others to less crowded facilities in the U.S. for further processing. Morgan Chesky visited the camp today. Tonight, these are the men, women, and children calling the shade of a Texas border bridge home. The group, mostly from Haiti, now numbers nearly 15,000. Tonight, a deadly Amtrak derailment that's left three people dead, multiple cars toppling off the tracks, dozens injured. All of a sudden, it was like this extremely violent force, and it picked me up and threw me from my chair into the wall. Federal investigators now on the scene trying to determine what went wrong. The growing emergency over vaccine mandates. New York's governor readies the National Guard to fill in for health care workers who are likely to quit over vaccines tomorrow. As a federal judge halts a vaccine mandate for teachers in the nation's largest public school system. Booster shots going into arms across the U.S. this weekend. But what if you received J&J &J or Moderna shots? What the experts say now about mixing vaccines. Border crisis. The head of Homeland Security says more than 12,000 Haitian migrants have been released inside the U.S. to await asylum hearings. Remembering Gabby, a massive outpouring of grief at the funeral today for Gabby Petito, who was murdered. Gabby loved life, lived her life every single day as the search for her fiancé enters its second week. Plus, a surprise proposal during a wedding that changed these girls' lives forever. This is NBC Nightly News with Kate Snow. Good evening. As we come on the air, federal investigators have arrived at the site of that deadly Amtrak train accident on Saturday. A team from the NTSB is in Montana to find out why the passenger train derailed while traveling on a section of track with no curves and with no severe weather around. We're getting new pictures today as well of the destruction, and we're hearing from the passengers who survived and the bystanders who rushed in to help. Jacob Ward starts us off tonight. It happened around 4 o'clock on a beautiful Saturday afternoon. The two-engine Amtrak train carrying 141 passengers and 16 crew members. Breaking news tonight, Americans kidnapped in Haiti. Now the effort to get them out. 16 American missionaries and one Canadian, including children, taken hostage. They were in the country to build an orphanage. What we know about the gang believed to have them and what the U.S. government is doing to try and free them. Heading home, former President Bill Clinton released from the hospital today. We have the latest on his condition. Vaccine mandate showdowns. Washington State's police forces must be vaccinated by tomorrow. Tomorrow, one state trooper quitting ahead of it. Well, this is the last time you'll hear me in a state patrol car. In Massachusetts, 150 members of the state police are resigning over their mandate as Chicago prepares to suspend some of its officers. The rallies for Ahmad Arbery killed after being followed by a father and son. The trial of the men accused of murdering him begins tomorrow. The video evidence that will play a key role in the case. NBC News exclusive, the widow of a police officer who took his own life after defending the Capitol on January 6th, speaking out how she's still fighting for him. Plus, the show will go on. The late night deal that will keep Hollywood going. This is NBC Nightly News with Kate Snow. Good evening. We begin tonight with the international crisis in Haiti and the kidnapping Saturday of 17 missionaries, 16 of them Americans and one Canadian. Five of those being held are just children. Their church group says they were in Haiti to build an orphanage, and they're asking for prayers tonight. Amid political turmoil, kidnappings have been on the rise in Haiti this year, and the U.S. government is trying to work with Haitian authorities to find a way to bring this group home. It's a story that's developing very quickly. We have two reports tonight, beginning with Sam Brock. Tonight, the turmoil and violence rocking Haiti has been directed at American citizens. After 17 people on a missionary visit were... 
Tonight, President Biden wraps up a global summit, the agreements he's touting as successes, and the big push to fix the supply chain, plus his new prediction about whether that massive social spending bill will pass, and Mr. Biden's reaction to a new NBC News poll showing his approval rating at a new low. While at home, his press secretary tests positive for COVID. Chaos at airports, thousands of American Airlines flights canceled or delayed this Halloween weekend. Lines to get rebooked, stretching through airports. I'm stuck here instead of being at home. City on edge. Thousands of New York's first responders set to be suspended tomorrow after refusing to get COVID vaccines. Is this city prepared for the shortages? Alec Baldwin telling his side of the story after that fatal onset shooting. We were a very, very well-oiled crew. The new reaction to his words tonight. A shocking attack in the subway in Tokyo. People fleeing in fear. The alleged attacker reportedly dressed as the Joker. Kids under pressure and acting out. The surge in violence and misbehavior at schools. Why adults may be to blame. Plus, on this Halloween, a house filled with good spirits and lighting the way to help others. This is NBC Nightly News with Kate Snow. Good evening. After a full weekend of in-person meetings with world leaders for the first time in a long time, President Biden today touted the G20 commitment to a global minimum tax, pandemic preparedness measures, and discussions of the global supply chain crisis. On climate change, the actions weren't as dramatic as many had hoped. The president now heads to a broader climate summit tomorrow, just as he's pushing Congress to pass signature social spending and infrastructure bills at home. And our new NBC News poll finds the president president with his lowest approval rating yet. We begin. Tonight, we remember the life of Senator Bob Dole, who passed away at the age of 98, a giant in American politics for decades, a Senate leader, a presidential nominee, and one of the defining voices of the greatest generation, who served and was wounded in World War II, then never stopped fighting for veterans, tributes pouring in tonight. New restrictions begin within hours for all travelers coming into the U.S. as we learn more about the severity of the Omicron variant. Thus far, it does not look like there's a great degree of severity to it. And the outrage in one school district, parents accused of knowingly sending their children to class with COVID, infecting others. The school shooting in Michigan were the parents of the suspected shooter on the run before their capture. New information tonight from the owner of the warehouse where they were found. The new allegation of sexual misconduct against news anchor Chris Cuomo, brother of New York's former governor, made hours after his fire from CNN. NBC News investigates how the growth in electric cars is leading to the destruction of critical rainforests. This is NBC Nightly News with Kate Snow. Good evening. It's never easy to say goodbye to a legend, someone who, no matter what your politics, everyone could agree made an impact in the U.S. Senate for veterans, for people with disabilities. Bob Dole died today at the age of 98. As his family pointed out, at his passing, he had been in service to his country for 79 years. Two pictures help tell the story of his long life. He was wounded in battle in World War II, an injury that stayed with him. And in one of his last public appearances, he summoned all his strength to stand from his wheelchair to salute a fallen veteran, former President George H.W. Bush. Even after leaving politics, he never stopped helping those who served this country. Kelly O'Donnell leads us off tonight. At the U.S. Tonight from Kentucky, the desperate search for survivors as the death toll from that string of tornadoes rises. The new videos that reveal the massive scope and scale of the damage. Across the state, rescuers digging through rubble. Family members hoping for a miracle. I'm trying to stay strong and I'm, it's very hard right now. And the anger tonight as workers are still missing from that collapsed candle factory. They knew it was coming and they kept those poor people in that, in that company, in that factory working. Our interview with the factory owner. If you knew the weather was coming, was there any thought to maybe suspending production? There are signs of hope. Two workers found alive there. But the reality in so many towns across this state is unbearable. We're going to have over a thousand homes that are just gone. 
We speak with the governor, coordinating the response. Every person we locate that we thought was lost is, is a miracle. Tonight, the search for survivors and for answers. And how will so many rebuild after so much destruction? There are tears, but there are also hugs and words of comfort for each other. This is NBC Nightly News with Kate Snow, reporting tonight from Mayfield, Kentucky. Good evening. It has now been almost 48 hours since that string of tornadoes tore across the middle of the country, and we're now getting a better sense of just how widespread and catastrophic the physical damage is. You can see it all around me here, and in the images from above, town after town looks just like this, with entire sections flattened. What we don't know yet is the full human toll. The official death count is at least 48 across five states, but the governor of Kentucky here believes his state alone... Tonight, new warnings about the rapid rise in COVID cases just days before Christmas, more states hitting record highs, some schools going remote this week, the NBA canceling five more games, SNL forced to put on a show with few cast members and no audience, and new lockdowns in Europe as public health officials here warn it may get worse. We are in for a world of trouble. Up in the air, holiday travel set to hit pandemic highs this week as many question whether they should go at all. What you need to know to travel safely or change your plans without losing money. The mad scramble to buy at-home tests ahead of the holidays. Stores in many areas completely sold out. Why are there so few available? A major setback for President Biden. A key Democratic senator announces he will not vote for the Build Back Better plan. I can't get there. This is a no. The White House firing back. Will your packages make it there? The new report card on the big three carriers. Who's delivering on time this holiday season? And the final shipping deadlines in the days ahead. This is NBC Nightly News with Kate Snow. Good evening. In some ways, it feels like an awful deja vu. March of 2020 all over again. Businesses, entertainment, sports shutting down amid rising COVID cases, long lines to get tested. But it's worth remembering how much has changed. We have vaccines and boosters now, treatments and other tools to mitigate risk and lessen the severity of illness. Still, for hospital workers already overwhelmed or for many of us trying to make decisions about how to spend the holidays, the spread of the Omicron variant is not good. And we are all working off incomplete information from public health leaders on down. We're going to do our best tonight to walk you through what we do know to help you make decisions. We begin with Kathy Park in the new epicenter of this surge right here in New York City. Tonight, the holiday rock. Tonight, closing arguments in the Kyle Rittenhouse homicide trial just hours away. The judge saying he's inclined to allow jurors to consider lesser charges in addition to intentional homicide. The city on edge for a verdict and possible unrest as Rittenhouse's mother talks with us about his dramatic testimony. When he broke down, I broke down. Controversial comeback, Aaron Rodgers back on the field today amid a barrage of criticism over COVID and the vaccine. Another NFL quarterback forced to sit out due to COVID protocols, while in the NBA, they're now advising fully vaccinated players to get a booster. A new lockdown, but for the unvaccinated only, one European country taking unprecedented measures, the new rules for those who refuse the shot. A deadly car explosion in the UK, the arrest tonight by counterterrorism police. Royal health concerns, why the palace says Queen Elizabeth canceled her first public appearance since a hospital stay weeks ago. The prime minister now speaking out. The Christmas labor crunch, why Santa might not be visiting your local mall this season. So we've never seen the demand or the shortage of Santas like we're doing this year. And heart and soul, the gift of music changing lives. This is NBC Nightly News with Kate Snow. Good evening. The governor of Wisconsin has put National Guard troops on standby in case there are protests after a jury reaches a decision in the trial of 18-year-old Kyle Rittenhouse. The televised case becoming a cultural flashpoint. Rittenhouse testified in tears that he was defending himself when he killed two people last summer during unrest in Kenosha. Prosecutors argue it was intentional homicide and Rittenhouse was the aggressor. Closing arguments are slated to begin tomorrow and the prosecution has asked the judge 
to allow the jury to consider lesser charges as well. And tonight, Rittenhouse's mother is speaking out. Breaking news tonight, two of the hostages kidnapped in Haiti more than a month ago have been released. Their church announcing they are safe and being cared for. The other 15 are still being held. Their captors had demanded $1 million ransoms for each. The manhunt for the passenger who fired a gun inside Atlanta's airport, sending travelers fleeing and grounding flights. While across the country today, long lines as Americans who skipped the holidays last year head home in record numbers. The race to get boost before Thanksgiving, appointments to get that third shot ahead of the holiday already booking up. Get it before Thanksgiving. The booster kicks in within days. Plus, how long scientists now believe this extra dose will last. New images tonight, the missing Chinese tennis player speaking over video to the president of the Olympics, what she told him. Getting to America, our behind-the-scenes look at the challenge of delivering products made in Asia to stores here. The toys are piling up. Back in the swing of it, the video Tiger Woods just released that has people wondering, has the comeback begun? And a family tradition lives on, how the next generation stepped up to save Thanksgiving for hundreds. This is NBC Nightly News with Kate Snow. Good evening. It was a brazen kidnapping that captured worldwide attention against the backdrop of an increasingly unstable government in Haiti. 36 days ago, one of the most notorious gangs there captured a group of American and Canadian missionaries and their families. They demanded $1 million in ransom per person. Today, we learned two of the hostages have been released. 15 are still being held. Monica Alba starts us off tonight. Two hostages held in Haiti for more than a month, free tonight, according to the missionary group who organized the service trip. Christian Aid Ministries confirming the two individuals are safe, in good spirits, and... Tonight, drastic action across the globe as the newly named Omicron variant spreads. President Biden holding an emergency meeting with his COVID task force. Restrictions on travel from eight African countries to the U.S. starting within hours as public health officials prepare for what may come next. It certainly shows the signs of being able to spread quickly. Chaos at airports around the world as this variant is being identified in more countries, including Canada, Israel, closing its borders to foreigners, Morocco, halting all incoming flights, while in South Africa, the doctor who first treated patients with Omicron advising calm. Currently, there's no reason for panicking. So how dangerous is it? We have the latest on the search for answers. The great return, millions of travelers taking to the roads and skies today on track for a new pandemic record. Biggest Cyber Monday ever. That's what analysts are predicting ahead of tomorrow's online bonanza. But this year, the deals are harder to find. What you need to know. Facing her accusers, the woman charged with helping Jeffrey Epstein abuse teenage girls in court for her trial tomorrow. And the moment a bride who's paralyzed walked down the aisle, the groom breaking down in tears. This is NBC Nightly News with Kate Snow. Good evening. Governments are moving quickly tonight to limit travel into their countries in an attempt to slow the spread of the new COVID variant called Omicron. Canada just announced it has identified cases, and the U.S. begins restrictions on travelers from some African countries just hours from now. President Biden held an emergency meeting with his top public health officials today to plan for what's next. But the science behind this new variant isn't coming into focus quite as quickly. Researchers warn there's a lot to be worried about, but but there's also a lot to learn, like whether Omicron is more dangerous Tonight, the coast-to-coast -coast travel mess as millions try to get home after the holidays. More than 6,000 flights canceled or delayed on one of the busiest travel days of the year. The painfully long lines to get rebooked, planes grounded by staffing shortages and nasty weather. 39 million under winter weather alerts tonight. New fears the lightning-quick spread of Omicron will impact critical services as workers call in sick. Plus, the government now reconsidering that five-day isolation period after a a positive test should another test be required at the end open and closed schools across the country grappling with what to do as omicron spreads some big districts going remote now others pushing forward with ramped up testing 
it would be much better if we stayed in school all the time. Seeing the devastation up close, residents finally allowed back in after a thousand homes were burned to the ground by that wildfire in Colorado. Rising tensions, President Biden today on the phone with Ukraine's leader vowing to respond decisively if Russia invades. This is NBC Nightly News with Kate Snow. Good evening. More than 100 million Americans were expected to travel around Christmas and New Year's exceeding last year. And now they're all trying to get home in the midst of nasty weather and a continued pandemic. More than 2,500 flights were canceled just today. Part of more than 12,000 canceled over the past week. The airlines are dealing with employees sick with COVID and winter weather today from flooding in Kentucky to icy roads in Arkansas. Overnight, conditions will worsen in some big East Coast cities. We begin tonight with Morgan Chesky. Tonight, the post-holiday travel rush from coast to coast. Long lines from Los Angeles, Fort Lauderdale, Cleveland, and Denver, where weary passengers grabbed a nap wherever they could. I had a couple of flights canceled yesterday, so I got moved to today. Nate Breaking news tonight, one of the deadliest fires in New York City history, a Bronx apartment building up in flames, at least 19 people killed, many of them children, dozens more seriously injured. I just heard people say, um, screaming, help, help, help. What investigators believed caused it. Major disruptions across the country with more workers out sick due to COVID. Hospitals struggling to fill shifts. Urgent care shutting down. 46 schools in Philadelphia forced to go remote because there aren't enough teachers as large cities cut back on mass transit. Our closer look into skyrocketing hospitalization numbers due to Omicron. Nearly half of all COVID patients in some major cities were admitted for another condition. So it's possible for somebody to come in with a broken arm or a broken hand and become a COVID positive case. Exactly. The U.S. and Russia just hours away from high stakes talks as Vladimir Putin sends more troops into Kazakhstan to help contain protests there. Happening right now, tennis star Novak Djokovic in court. Will he be allowed to leave isolation in Australia to play? And real life superhero, a police officer and former airman's new mission. This is NBC Nightly News with Kate Snow. Good evening. A terrifying scene in New York City this morning. One of the worst fires in the city's recent history. The fire commissioner says it started with a malfunctioning space heater in the bedroom of an apartment. The door to that apartment was left open, allowing smoke to spread to every floor of that high-rise building where many residents are immigrant families. There were dramatic rescues, but also many trapped in stairwells. Authorities are saying 19 people perished, among them nine children. Many more are injured and now homeless. We begin tonight with Kathy Park. The five alarm fire ripped through this Bronx High. Tonight, the massive winter storm targeting nearly a third of the country. Snow, sleet and freezing rain pounding much of the south. More than a million likely to lose power. Whiteout conditions sending cars skidding. Nearly all flights from Charlotte grounded. The storm now pushing north. Act of terror, the FBI identifies the man who held a rabbi and others hostage at a Texas synagogue. New reporting tonight on how he entered the country. The president weighing in. This was an act of terror. As the rabbi speaks out about what happened just before the SWAT team raid. Pushed to the limits, more hospitals now so short-staffed and overwhelmed with COVID patients, they're suspending elective surgeries. But also some potential good news, cases and hospitalizations starting to drop in the states hit first by the Omicron wave. Game over for Novak Djokovic, the tennis star deported after his final loss in an Australian courtroom. And it would have been her 100th birthday Birthday, how so many are honoring Betty White this weekend by helping animals and adopting pets. This is NBC Nightly News with Kate Snow. Good evening. If you're sitting in the eastern half of the country tonight, you've probably already been hit by this winter storm or you're bracing for it. All total, 100 million Americans are under some kind of winter weather, wind or coastal flood alert. Snow, freezing rain and sleet fell today in parts of the south not used to any of that. Check out this dash cam video from Tennessee. Heavy snow in Virginia and a wintry mix stranding drivers and taking down power lines in the Carolinas. Snow still coming 
cooling down in the nation's capital. And as the system moves north overnight, the winds will pick up. Already there are wide-scale power outages with more likely on the way. We're covering the storm and where it's headed. Let's begin with Kathy Park in Charlotte. A dangerous... Tonight, some of the strongest words yet from the U.S. toward Russia, the Secretary of State threatening a severe response from the United States if any Russian forces enter Ukraine, as we get new details about an alleged secret Russian plot to overthrow Ukraine's government. The State Department late today ordering the evacuation of embassy family members there. The all-day manhunt for an alleged cop killer accused of gunning down a Texas deputy during a traffic stop. And New York City's mayor called for federal help after two officers are shot there, one killed. Thousands marching against vaccine mandates in Washington today amid new predictions the Omicron wave may be nearing its nationwide peak. The IRS under fire. Tax season starts tomorrow and warnings that refunds will be delayed. How to make sure you get yours. Extreme sticker shock. Used car prices hit a new high. Dealers struggling to fill half-empty lots, making it nearly impossible for some to get a car. A lot of people that come here cannot afford a car today. This is NBC Nightly News with Kate Snow. Good evening. It is hard to know what Vladimir Putin is planning, but the U.S. Secretary of State today was very clear, telling NBC News if Russia decides to move troops into Ukraine, no matter the size of the incursion, that move would be met with swift and severe action by the United States and its allies. Russia has already amassed more than 100,000 troops just outside Ukrainian territory. President Biden has said Putin has a stark choice, either de-escalation or diplomacy. Late today, the State Department ordered the departure of family members of embassy staff in Ukraine. If there is military conflict ahead between Russia and Ukraine, the head of the British military has said it may be on a scale we have not seen in Europe since World War II. Raf Sanchez starts us off tonight. 